Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about XCNY 12.8 volt 310 amp hour battery lithium ion phosphate. And this is a follow up from, yes, you guessed it, right? Whoop, up there somewhere. That's where we had already the 280 amp hour, same compact housing. And this time we'll look at 310 amp hour version. Let's get started with this video. So as always, we do look at the battery itself. We do look what's provided in the package, which is pretty straightforward, so not a lot to cover, but um, it is a little pouch with a user manual, warranty cord, comes with two sets of M8 bolts, one I did already install, the shorter version, and then we'll look at the specification. And in case you drop them, you need to pick them up. So. We do look at the same specification uh, like we did before because this one and the 280 amp hour are covered on one page. Here it is. And it does say it has create A lithium ion phosphate cells. Oh, and by the way, before I continue, I had uh, I had feedback in terms of you want to know the price up front. Great. Here's the price, how it is right now. So online they put it for $5.59 on Amazon.com and they have a $150 coupon at the moment which you can apply so you are around 409 dollars for this by the way when you compare 280 amp hours with this one price wise you can make the math yourself but that's the current pricing so let's continue with the specification uh, it does say which is so interesting recommended charging current is at 40 amp for this 0.2 c rate which uh, i disagree 310 divided by five for 310 amp, hour, for 310 amp hours. Um, it is at 62 amps, not 40 amps, by the way. We have to make some continuous charge and discharge at 200 amp. We'll test it later. We have the peak discharge current, 500 amp for three to five seconds. We try to get as close as possible, but I can't promise with my setup that I get there. And it is cool here as well. It has a low temperature protection, low temperature charging protection, um, which means uh, it will be at less than 32 F, which is zero Celsius, it should stop and protect it. And there's a low temp discharge protection as well at minus eight F. And then of course the BMS has some protection here as well, as you can see the typical ones we can see, and we will test the low and the high temp cutoff because that was the most in interesting so far. But um, let's really quick cover the size of this battery again, because it is the same size like the 280 amp hour. We'll compare the internals later because we'll take it apart as well. But this one has the same size. It's a compact design, that's what I call it. And I totally agree with that because when you look at the Group 31 housing, man, this is, like, this is just a little bit bigger. And uh, watch that video about the 280 amp hour battery because I compared both sizes. I don't do that right now. I'm not doing that again um, because it's already on video. You can find it on my in my other video. So let's continue with the capacity test and then see how much we can actually draw out of this 310 amp hour battery. All right, so we got the battery fully charged. You can see the voltage is dropping. To prove it again, here we have the battery right behind it, the 310 version in this case from XC and Y. And we should draw around 62 amps in this case, because that's 0.2C rate, not like in a manual described but that's what it is so we hope that we can get close to that and then it should take about five hours until the battery is empty and then we'll see the results so it means i'll get this battery started to start a capacity test that is also a little higher than i expected but we will get lower in a little bit so the load will adjust. So I let it run and we'll be back as soon as we are back with the results. And then we'll see what we can pull out of this 310 amp hour battery. Oh yeah, it's beeping, you hear that right. We got 322 amp hour out of this 310 amp hour battery. That is a clear pass, my friends. So this is amazing to see again, um, overperformed, I love it. Let's continue with the video. Alrighty, so that's a good result if you ask me. Over 320 amp hour for an F310 amp hour advertised battery, that's amazing. When I look at page 13 of the specification, recommended charging current, just wanna 
highlight it again. It's the same um, booklet, manual, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it says um, use 29.2 volt lithium ion phosphate battery charger to maximize capacity. This is wrong for this battery because it's a 12.8 volt, so you want to be around 14.6 volt to charge lithium ion phosphate um, with 12.8 volt. And it says also recommended charging current. This is also wrong. 0.2C is 40 amp, wrong. 62 and 0.5C, which is 50%. 310 divided by two, or by 50%, you can think 155 amp hour, not 100 amp. So this is wrong in this case. I'm not continuing with more on this, but uh, let's continue with a high discharge test. Oh, all right, when it comes to the high discharge test, we're about to start. Let's just kick on the inverter. I did charge the battery to full again and the proof right behind it, there it is. Let's see how far we can get. As always, I try to charge other batteries, but uh, for consistent load, we need some, uh, something like a heat gun. Just get this really right up. So it should be at least aiming for 200 amps, I guess. My setup, um, which is only in quotes, is 3000 something inverter. Uh, might not get us up to 500 amps peak, but let's see how far we can get with a con con consistent load at least. And advertises 200 amps. Discharge, no issue. This is around 2200 watts. This is where one of my charges stops working. Let's see. Nice, okay, we are, ooh, yeah, nice. That looks pretty, pretty good. 258, that's what I wanna see. Let's see if we can get higher. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 348, ooh, man. I'm not sure what's the limit here. I'm sure this is a lot of power going through here. Okay, let's see. Here we have a comparison. Oh yeah, pretty accurate actually. So let's see, go with the max. Bang. Yeah, 350. This is impressive. It's rated for 200. Dang, that is a lot of current going through. That is great to see. I didn't make it to the 500. Um, apologies for that, but still, it's rated for 200 continuously. That's what we wanted to see in test and it does the job. When you wanna go higher, have the proper wire and uh, Definitely be aware of uh, it will not stop, even though the max continuous discharge is rated by with 200. Um, have a fuse, have your wiring accordingly. You don't want to go too high, overheat the thing. Uh, the peak for three to five seconds, that's 500. It's not that it's continuously meant to be. So keep that in mind. Let's continue with the video. And again, it has great numbers. I like it. And we went high. Uh, I should have done it last time. I didn't do that with the 280 amp hour. Sorry about that. But we got over 300 amp, which is great. 
but um, also remember the fuse. All right, we'll continue now with taking this one apart. Then we can also compare the internals and do our testing on the high and low temp and see what kind of BMS they're using in this and what cells maybe if we can get access. So let me take it apart. Let me open this up and then I'll fill you in. What was cool, <laughs> it's pretty similar to the other one. So when I open this one, we can see we have this very thick, most likely one gauge wire. We have three of the six gauge wires over here on this side. We have three of the six gauge wires on the other side, which come from the main battery term, uh, from main battery negative, go to the BMS and then from BMS to the terminal. So one thing I realized um, is this heavy duty gauge wire, at least it feels like, looks good. It has everywhere we can see and when we touch it, it has those butterfly crimps. Here's clue, here's clue, here's clue. Um, here on the terminals, uh, on the housing. We have clue over here for the temperature probe. We have clue here on the uh, BMS leads and we have glue over here. Uh, we do not have clue on the BMS itself. One thing I noticed, which uh, is here at least, uh, which is a little bit sad, but um, the sh heat shrink is a little bit too short so I can see the exposed wires over here. So I have to fix that myself just to make sure that we have a solid connection over here. I wanna make sure that's good. And everything else looks from, just from looking up from here without taking it out, looks similar. So I'll try to get it out and I will try to um, get an access over here and compare it side by side what it looks like actually. And by the way, this is the BMS number and it feels like a charge and discharge 200 amp is the same like the other one. Okay, really quick, I took it off. I just want to show you here what I meant. Um, I can see the wire exposed here. Hope you can see that. Here we can see it. And yeah, than that, I like that it's bolted on. <laughs> so it's not laser valid, but it looks pretty solid. Okay, I can't get it out, sadly. It's glued way more on, on the bottom um, this time than it was last time. So we have to work with what we can see here. So I'll try to get more access and get the 280 battery here so we can compare it. All right, here you can see the 280 version and the 310 amp version. And when you look at it, it looks pretty much the same if you ask me. I would be really curious about the cells in here, which I wasn't able to expose last time because it's just so hard to get access. Um, I'm worried that I might rip out the clue too much, so I'll try to get access with the 310. But from just looking here, it looks really, really close. Also in terms of the cells and whatnot, so I'm wondering why we have 280 and 310. What's the difference? That's really what I'm curious about. It's even the same BMS, even though we have an attention sticker here, but it has the same model ID as much as I see here and compare. Yeah, totally the same. Different serial number, obviously, but yeah, that's what it is. Nice. So now you have an idea that those are pretty much the same, except for the cells, wherever those differences are coming from. Uh -huh. Okay, quite interesting. So I can see it says 3.2 volts, 314 amp hour, the cell here. Uh, it's hard to take a picture, I'll try it anyways. It's hard to read, but I think it's accessible. So that explains why we have at least more than only a 3 and a 10. So pretty cool. Okay, now we have a charging. You can see here with 10 point something amps. That's what we're charging currently. And let's see if we can get the probe out. And if we can, again, test this. Yes, it looks like it was clued in, but I pulled it out anyway. So hopefully it didn't damage anything. We'll see. And uh, if, we'll see right now if the BMS is still okay. And that looks good. That really looks good. So now she's there. Let's see if it comes back. Yep, there we are. All right. High temp cutoff, it does have it. Let's see what a low temp cutoff test tells us. Use an ice pack, more realistic version, right? You can see it again. Nice. Dropped it, stopped charging. And we 
it back up. So all those tests, they work. This is amazing. This is good to see and exactly what we want to see. I can stop it here. That's great. Pretty much on the end with our testing here. And what can I say? Summarizing this battery, it's, it did perform well, um, pretty much similar to the 280 amp hour battery. And it's only the question, to be honest, if you want to get 310 or 280 or maybe which offer is at bad at the time when you buy it. Because what's pretty cool is the compact design. It's going all in the right direction. More power, smaller form factor housing. Can you imagine having two of those boxes, 310 times two, 620 amp hour, and then you run it in your RV or where you, wherever you want to do that. Only thing what's missing, doesn't have Bluetooth, same like the other one. It does not have any self-heating function for winter camping. Those are little downsides, but really depending on your use case and how you want to use those. But everything else, it does work from the get-go. It works as it's glued together. Is it good and great that I use packing tape instead of anything else? Probably not the most pretty thing in terms of maintaining, maintenance, changing cells. That will never happen, I'm pretty sure. It does, by the way, come with a 36, I believe, 36. Um, is, is that it correct? Oh yeah, here it is. It does come with a three-year free replacement warranty, lifetime technical support. So, um, so far they are on the market for a couple of years. I've seen, and you've seen maybe as well, there's the 25.6 volt version. I had other versions as well. They're longer on the market, which is good to see at least. Um, is it the non plus ultra ultra in terms of build quality? Absolutely not. But at least it, they have great build in general. They use thick wires, thick insulated. That's what I like, especially here. They clue and slap everything on top is that great no definitely not but still at that price point that's that's what you pay for at the end but for that price point i love those x and y batteries so far so link in the description below in case you have any other questions let me know also in the comment section below would love to hear what you think about this and thanks for all your feedback you're putting into those comments i try to work on those and if you have any other suggestions please let me know and see you next time